Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over Q4 of the bi weekly contest 42 uh, minimum adjacent swaps for K consecutive ones. Uh, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, so the short answer, in case you're wondering how I got this so quickly, is because I've solved this problem before. And not only have I solved this problem before, I actually wrote an editorial about it. So, um, so it's a little bit uh, lucky on my end, I suppose, some holiday spirit. Um, but I'm going to do my best explaining it, but the live portion is probably not as interesting because it's just me copy and paste and then making some minor adjustments for this problem um, or like for the input. But yeah, so the first thing that I would think, I think thought about when I, when I opened this prompt today uh, was that, okay, there is some sliding window. We know that we have to get, you know, given K consecutive ones. I mean, I think the, and if you're not familiar with sliding windows, I definitely um, recommend practicing that for a few times uh, because this is a hard problem to learn sliding windows on. So, uh, so now for the rest of the video, I'm going to assume that you're very strong at sliding windows. Otherwise, um, yeah, because th this may be a long explanation, so I don't, don't want to describe just the sliding window portion. But let's say you have a window of, um, let's say you have a window of all the consecutive, uh, of K consecutive ones, right? And, you know, let's say you have already have the window and we have, um, yeah, and that's basically the idea. Um, and then the, the idea after that is, okay, how do, you know, you could figure out how much it costs because, um, and this is sim uh, done in other similar uh, leak code problems. So it's a little bit tricky, but the idea is that, okay, the, the minimum swap will be the one that, you know, you move uh, toward the, the middle element, right? And you could kind of prove this because, um, well, first of all, you know, let's say you have, have this uh, window. Um, well, you never want to swap two once because it never makes sense. So you only want to swap zeros and ones because if you swap two once, you didn't change anything. Instead, you just get more moves. So you only want to swap zero and once. And and as a result, you always want to move the median. Um, if, if K is even, then you can also do the math. It doesn't really matter that, you know, as long as you choose a number to, uh, uh, location in the middle, then you swap to the middle. Um, I'm not going to explain that part too much um, because... Um, it, it'll be one of those exercises that left at home uh, type thing. Try to prove that um, if you move the ones toward the median, that'll be the minimum for that window. Um, so then the tricky part is, okay, now we have a window. We know the cost function. Um, whew, how do we translate the sliding window as we slide, right? Because the tricky part is, okay, um, with sliding window, Almost like a dynamic programming problem, but not really, not in the same way. Is that okay? Um, with a sliding window problem, let me scroll down here so I could do some visualization. Um, ideally, hmm. sorry about that, my computer is being a little bit slow right now. Ideally, you know, you have some uh, string. I mean, I'm just going to write them as, you know, whatever. Man, my I apologies for this lag. My computer is actually, I don't know why it's being so slow. Okay, there it is. What is my Chrome is? Maybe my, I don't know. What, maybe some stuff is running in the background. But yeah, but now basically, if you look at a sliding window, and I'll, I'll uh, highlight that by drawing a segment. Um, and, you know, so basically as you move from left to right, uh, keeping the number of, of uh, one's constant. My apologies for how long this visualization is taking, but uh, but yeah, but basically, well, so there are two parts of a sliding window that I, uh, I would think about, which is me drawing this ASCII art. No, no, uh, okay, right, so basically. Um, what we want to do is we want to reuse the middle part, the overlapping part of the sliding window as we move from left to right. So the overlapping part, we want to make sure that we want to reuse it or in a good way. And then we want to have a efficient way to remove the left and then we move the right. Um, there are other ways to solve of this, but this is my the way that I did it the last time I did this uh, with the sliding window. 
So then basically the way that I did it is that, okay, if you write out the formula for median, you have, you, you're going to have, um, you know, uh, X sub M minus X sub I for all the I's that are like the indexes, right? And then, you know, you minimize that. But another way that I thought about it is that is thinking about it another way. Um, and this is a little bit tricky. Hopefully I can draw a little bit better. Okay, it draws a little bit better, not that much better. Um, but basically, let's say we have, uh, you know, let's say that is the median number. Uh, let's say, you know, this is our window. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more zero so that it doesn't look like it's too regular. Okay, so it's something like that, right? Um, let's draw a little bit on the left as well. So let's say we have something like that. And this is our median, right? Well, what I did is I count. I count, okay. You know, the next one is one zero away. The one, the next one uh, zero after that is two zeros away, right? And in a way, that's basically all I'm going to keep track of as I move the windows from left to right. Um, as I pop off, I, I go, okay, let's say I move the median from here to here to here. What does that mean, right? Well, that means that if I put things in a stack, um, I'm going to pop up the, the two, and then now it's going to be one and a three on the left side of the stack, and uh, and on the right side I have zero, and then also, you know, let me draw this visualization to be more explicit. Um, on the right side I have zero and four, Oh, sorry, one zero and four zeros, right? So then now you can think about it, uh, the way that I thought about it is that, okay, if I have these as, you know, my zeros a stack, I have a two and then one on the right side, and then um, a three and a one on the, the, oh, sorry, two and a one on the left side, and a three and a one on the right side, right? Um, and then now we change it to, let me just put it here, because it's a little bit maybe better for visualization, I don't know. Uh, a lot of ASCII art, but um, but yeah. Now on on the on the new median, now you can see that we have one three on the left side, and and one and a four on the right side, right? Um, so now hopefully this builds a visualization that you can kind of see where my intuition is at, and the rest of it is just figuring out the formula. Um, so basically. You know, you have a queue of sorts uh, or a stack of sorts, and then, you know, we pop off this two, and then we add on a four, and I just do some, uh, a lot of tracking on what's on the left and on the right, and I do some formulas to get the answer. And we're going to, don't worry about, um, you know, I just want to go over the visualization first. Now we're going to go over the code together, and you'll see what I mean, hopefully, in a clearer way. Um, cool. So basically, yeah, I keep track of the left index and the right index. And I actually have really good comment on this code, if you see this during the contest, because, I, I, as I said, I wrote this editorial, so I'd love to comment in. But yeah, so basically the count of zeros that are closer to the left, so we basically create, um, you know, these numbers to the left, and we wrote the sum of the distance to the left, um, again, because, so basically the way that I think about it is that, um, for example, this has a two and a one. So together, this one has to uh, do one swap to get to the right. And this one has to get one and so two swaps to get to the first one and then one additional swap. So in that way, it's kind of like a prefix sum if you want to think about it that way. But but that's basically how I kind of collect my cues. Um, so yeah, so that so I keep track of my cues. Uh, explicitly on the left and on the right. Um, I, you could think of them as stack as well, but I, you know, uh, but you know, I have access to the middle. That's why uh, you know I use two cues. Um, and then here we track the number of ones in the sliding window. And this is just a big min. Um, this is the current number of zeros that are trailing until we hit a one. So that's basically just like, like a, a like an in memory, just keeping track of you know, the current situation. Um, so if so now if we see a one, this is where the magic happens. If we ha see a zero, uh, we just keep, we just add that to the number of zeros, right? So that's basically 
what I'm doing here. If, if it is a one, well, we add the number of ones, you know, to the number of ones. And and it, as usual, uh, we we add to the right side of the queue, the right queue, um, the current running total. That's just the number of zeros. One total has a number of zeros, right? So basically that is, for example, that's just uh, me adding the four to the right side. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, and then here, it, this is just the, the count of the number of ones to the right. This, this is the sum of the uh, cost of shifting all the numbers from the right to the right. This is almost like a prefix, in this case a suffix, but this is similar to a suffix sum. That, that's how uh, I'm doing this is that, okay, you know, um, the, the, the total numbers, this is going to be four, right? For example, uh, for this four, well, this running total means that there's five total zeros to the right side. And that also means that the new one will take five uh, swaps to get to the middle. It's a little bit tricky for sure, but that's basically the idea. Um, yeah. And then now, the, the other part is that, okay, I mean, I, I think I went over to getting rid of the two. Well, not yet, but we do talk about getting the four put in. But then the other thing to notice is that, okay, well, this three swap from the right side to the left side. So we have to do the math that way. This is, you know, like I said, the visualization is uh, the, the hard part. Once you have the visualization, you can do the math. It may be slow. It may, you may take a while. And to be honest, the first time I've done this, uh, did this problem, um, it took me a long time to kind of, be really careful about the math. So the math is actually hard as well. Um, but yeah, but basically I moved it to the from the left to the right uh, because these zeros are now you know from the left side to the right side. Um, so yeah, the shifting zeros are you know the first element uh, on the right side. Now I remove it from that prefix sum as I talked about, and these are formulas that you know, like I said, um, you know, practice figuring out why this is the case, but. The logic comes from a prefix sum type type solution, and then I moved that same number to the left, um, also in a reverse prefix sum kind of way. Um, but you just move it to the left, and then you append the same thing to the left, and then of course we want to remove the actual thing to, from the right side and put it to the left side, and that's what these two lines does. Um, and and then here we actually pop pop the, the left side of the code um, or le left we get rid of the leftmost one and this is just basically um, the math that does this uh, again this is like a reverse prefix sum so um, yeah and then at the very end um, but yeah uh, basically this is just us uh, keeping track of the the um, uh, the left number. This is just cleanup uh, of the left index. It, uh, I actually don't think I use it that much. I don't. Hmm, I think this is just for show, to be honest. Because uh, I actually, it seems like actually I don't use this. <laughs> um, but the reason is because we're, because um, I like to make things explicit. But the reason why we don't use this is that uh, we have an implicit left index because. Uh, we pop things off of our queue left. Um, so this is actually unnecessary, but um, but it's there. Um, and then, yeah, if the number of ones is equal to K, then we, um, that means that in the window, we have the exact number of K, uh, K ones. So then the current cost is just equal to the cost of the left side, moving it to the middle, and the right side moving it to the middle, which is, basically this thing, and then we take the min of that and we, we move the right index, we return the best answer, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, I know that I hand-waved a little bit over the, the actual math. It's it's not hard, but it's not easy either. Definitely try to push yourself to uh, learn this, but the idea is prefix sum, uh, and these formulas reflect prefix sum. You can also rewrite this in a prefix sum uh friendly kind of way. And I guess that's a prerequisite for this problem as well. Um, but yeah, in, in, terms of comp anyway, in terms of complexity, uh, there's a lot of operations, but they're all, you only do a constant amount of them, even though there are many of them, uh, because we look at each cell at most constant number of times and constant number of operations. This is going to be linear time. Uh, in terms of space, it could be all ones, in which case, 
um, you know, these queues would be, you know, in the thing. So it is going to be um, linear space as well. Uh, so linear time, linear space, you can't, hmm, shouldn't be able to do less than that. Let me know if you have a better case. Um, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, I'm not going to, hmm. I'm debating whether I should just show uh, me solving it during the contest, but to be honest, it's just copy me copying and pasting it and then making minor adjustments to the problem. So I'm I might just skip that. Uh, let me know what you think about this problem, um, and I will see you uh, later.